Thank you so much, and I'm glad uh, <clears throat> Ellen mentioned that. And I'm, I'm a little hoarse from the basketball game last night, so my apologies. Um, but let me just share one, one uh, <clears throat> quick note. You know, I am up here because of AFT, and because of the teachers, and because of NEA. When I ran for office, I ran in a competitive Democrat primary against a 20-year incumbent. And let me tell you, that is an extremely hard thing to do. But that gentleman was not there for teachers, and teachers were there for me, and I will always be there for teachers. Now, we've had, uh, we've had debates for two years up here about a couple of things. Testing and evaluation. That's right. That's all it's been. We have become so mired in the testing argument that we have completely forgotten what it means to have an education system built around students, families, and teachers. Yeah. The wind of any kind of meaningful education reform that actually helps anyone that I just mentioned has been totally sucked out of our state and the discussion around education because all we can do is focus on testing. And that in and of itself is a tremendous tragedy. Yeah. Yeah. Now I visited, I had the, the good fortune to visit all of my schools over the summer. And it was one of the most rewarding experiences I've had. I hit all of them. High school, elementary, charter, the whole bit. And I learned a few things. One thing that I learned is that it is unanimous that we have to unshackle our teachers from the, the government regulations and the testing requirements that are removing teaching from your job. The second thing I learned is that, is that when we talk about our children and we talk about our students, what we have done in our schools, I think, is, a, is, is one of the worst disservices we can do to the next generation. We, we have robbed our students of extracurriculars. We've robbed them from individual attention. And all we can do is the easy way out, which is talk about more testing. Yep. Now, now, that's right, and let me tell you something about standardized testing. Uh, I, in my own life, you know, a lot of us all have standardized testing scores. I would not make it out of the third grade if we passed that bill <laughs> in the legislature. As a student who grew up uh, with challenges around dyslexia, actually, this is the kind of thing that I also learned. It's that the students today that are in our schools, for better or worse, the reality is they come to the classroom with all sorts of challenges. They come with health challenges, they come with uh, mental and behavioral challenges, they come with learning disabilities, they come with obesity, they come with diabetes, and it is not the teacher's fault that they have those problems. Yet what the agenda from the fourth floor is doing is blaming teachers for all of society's problems. And that's absolutely not right. So it's easy for us as politicians to come up here and try and find some way to go back and say we helped education, we helped children. But the reality is the only thing that we can, we can seem to be able to talk about are these small testing, short cycle, these types of issues. Because we are afraid to deal with the real problems in our society. The breakdown of the family, That's the right. health challenges. That's right. That's right. That's right. So I want us to remember to not use what we're talking about up here in terms of evaluation and testing as a scapegoat for the real problems that we're facing. What we need is real education reform change. And that means community schools. It means wraparound services to support our teachers. It means removing the burdens that are in the classroom right now so teachers can get back to teaching. Yeah! And it also means understanding that we've got to make funding a top priority. None of this can happen. Real education reform cannot happen without fixing the funding formula and funding what it takes to reduce our classroom size That's it. from 30 students, which is what it is in reality right now, That's it. back down to 15 to give students the attention they need. Yeah.
So I want to thank you for coming out today. And let's send one message. Let's make sure people hear it. Who are we putting first for New Mexico? Who are we putting first for New Mexico? Thank you very much.